welcome back to Scale Modeling Cafe. Welcome to another sprue tour video. Welcome to another Airfix sprue tour video. The subject of this one is the Chinook. And here it is. I'll just peek out from behind the box. Um, yeah, one of Airfix's 2024 releases. It um, all the releases seem to be coming out, uh, out at around the same time. The B24, the Bulldog and some of the starter sets. And um, yeah, I thought I'd just get a whole bunch of the new stuff just to um, show you what you get in the box and offer my thoughts. Not all of them are going to be built on the channel. Um, some of them are. I keep changing my mind which one. But um, yeah, the Chinook. Um, I think it's I think it's a great subject. Some people have moaned about it a little bit, but I think it's a great subject because it's one of those iconic aircraft that um, Mrs. Miggins will you know know what it is concord spitfire but then every warbird is a spitfire to mrs miggins um chinook vulcan it's one of those iconic british aircraft that um you know uh, everybody in the uk knows um so i think it's a great choice uh for a subject uh now there um are one or two emissions um and accuracy things that um, definitely don't take away from it, but there's, you know, they're a little bit odd. So what I'll do is um, I'll just get my phone, which I've left over there, and um, I'll go through a post by uh, a mate of mine, Dave Fleming. He put it up on Facebook, and he just listed a few of the things. So I'm sure Dave won't mind if I just read out exactly what those things are, just so you're forewarned, um, before getting over to the bench. So um, I'll just dive off, get my phone, and uh, and I'll give you that list. Okay, um, I've got Dave's post here. So, um, right, let me just find on... Right, here, so, okay. There is a little bit of a caveat at the start, he says. Um, first up, I'm no Chinook expert, and my terminal terminology may be wrong. Um, oh, hang on. Okay, uh, bins on, kit there, ready for the bench. Um, this is what Dave has said. Uh, starts off with a bit of a caveat, which I think is a good thing. Uh, first up, I'm no Chinook expert, and my terminology may be wrong. Just have a long-term interest in the airframe and get obsessed by details. Secondly, I'm sure the list is, uh, or sure the following is by no means exhaustive. Just a few things I've noticed from fettling the kit for a few days and discussions elsewhere. Um, he's also done quite a lot of research looking at photos and things like that. Uh, right, uh, the following concentrates just on the HC1. Later RAF versions have more differences. Um, right, here we go. We're into the meat of it now. Rear fuselage strakes missing. The Chinook had strakes on the underside of the fuselage just in front of the rear undercarriage. These have been missed completely from the kit. I looked on the runners in case they were just missed on the instructions, but no sign. Especially strange, as these are clearly shown on AFX's LiDAR scans. Reproducing them with plastic car strips should be straightforward, but an annoying omission. So I don't know whether that's on the box art, but certainly if you go to the AFX website and their workbench, um, find all the Chinook stuff, you'll probably see it um, in there. Uh, or just look at pictures. Um, pilots, your pedals. Uh, these will be pretty much uh, visible through the nose windows. Again, plastic car to replace, yeah. Uh, Spons and fuselage. The kit ones are only for the early HC1, with a caveat. Additional vents were added on top of these. One between the forward and second cabin window, one under the third cabin window, and one just before the rear cabin window. ZA675 is the 1983 earliest I found these visible, and they're on all versions of the HC1 and other operators too, after that. I suspect it to do with pre uh, pressurised refuelling system. Uh, and then it goes on about the other marks. Um, right, fuel points provided as decals. In the real thing, the centres are inset. Um, I can live with decals, is what he says. I think I probably could too as well. Um, right, the caveat. The kit has an inset on top of the sponson under the rear cabin window that doesn't seem to appear on early HC1s. Example, 
Bravo November, but does appear on later aircraft. My suspicion is it's a panel that's been removed to aid maintenance. There you go. Right, the circular sound filters. They need rails in front of them. The rails were a permanent fit on most, uh, sorry, on almost all RAF Chinooks after they first started using their desert filters and even after refitting the cones again. A couple of pieces of micro strip per side should suffice. For the kit Golf version, it appears to be fitted with frame for ALQ144 IRCM, if not the actual system. Airfix appear to have included the mounting bracket on the fuselage under the engine. This needs to be removed for Bravo November. So just check your references on that one. Rotor blades, correct carbon fiber profile, but with a droop that doesn't appear uh, on the same. CF is pretty rigid. The er early metal blades had a slight droop, but I do wonder why Airfix included this. I'm going to try a hot and cold water treatment uh, strapped to a ruler to try and correct. So um, I think what he's saying there is... Um, there are, I think they're too bendy, I think is what he's saying. Engine exhausts. Uh, these should have a strengthening ring on the forward section. This would be difficult to correct, but imagine an enterprising 3D designer would find it quite easy to design and print a replacement. Later versions had a different exhaust cone and the same plea applies. Right, the cone intake filters mesh devoid of detail. This would have been difficult to mould, but some detail would have been nice. Edward, are you listening? Seats. The back of the cabin seats are very visible through the windows, but provided as flat when there are in fact strap webbing. Painting might make it better, but will be fun. No soundproofing on the rear cabin walls. This may have been removed on some aircraft in service. Uh, detail apparently based on HC246. Um, he's going to do his buttoned up. I think I probably will as well. Uh, it's a couple of raised panels on the rotor pylon just behind the engines. These are flush panels. In real life, sanding them off would remove the rivet detail, but easily replaced. S right, single row of antennae mounts on the port fuselage. This limits the kit to ZA serial aircraft. ZD batch had the twin rod mounts, and these were eventually retrofitted across the fleet. Kit version ZA684 was one of the few Desert Storm Chinooks to retain the single row. The kit design, where sprue A, and for that matter, makes me ponder if Airfix have a second version planned with the twin rows on a separate port fuselage half. The kit has unused IRCM G13-14 pods and what looks like Moore's sensors. Right, I hope you can follow that. So, um, essentially, the HF aerial, I'm assuming it's the HF aerial, um, that goes down the side has a single row on the kit um, most of the Gulf War ones had two rows, but some of them had one. So they've done their research correctly. The one that, that, that's in there is the single row. Right, there we go. Um, so that's it. That That's all of Dave's um, observations so far. I thought it was a useful exercise to bring that to you before we nip over and have a look at the plastic and then do a wash up. So let's do that right now. Okay, here we go. Here, yeah, sorry for the glare on the box, but um, yeah, it's quite a nice, uh, it's quite a nice box actually. Very shiny, as you can see. Um, rivet detail on the box art for those of you who are going to go down that route. Okay, there's all the plastic parts. We'll put those to one side. Get the instructions out. Imagine these are going to be standard Airfix type instructions. And I was right, um, having to cut these bits off. I don't know what that's all about. Um, some part of the molding process, I suspect. Now, um, these parts here, I know some people have suffered a bit of warpage. So I'm going to check mine when I open them just to see if they have sort of twisted or bent or anything like that. Um, annoying, but um, yeah. We'll have to wait and see. So more moulding lugs uh, having to be removed there. And uh, I really like the presentation of this where it shows you which are the new parts and where they've gone. And in green, the bits to remove. So that's nice. These, uh, the fabric seats are actually moulded solid in this and you will be able to see them in the window. So even if you're going to do it all buttoned up, you will need to paint those. Uh, I believe it's red. 
opening up a load of holes um, down for the sides uh, for which particular um, version you're doing. And then FX have been doing this a lot of late where you have this template that you put over the parts to enable you to drill holes in exactly the right place. Um, probably advisable if that doesn't clip in just to seat it with a bit of tape or something that would help it. More molding things to be removed and it's kind of a bit of a hybrid. A lot of helicopters you build the sort of internal shell and then the um, outside shell goes around it. This little bit of that going in but it looks really nicely detailed. Fuse large halves going together. The belly plate going on after you've drilled some holes. Um, that's going to be quite a crucial fit around there. And then another one of these template things. And what I really like about this model is this sort of capping piece hides the seam. So it really is going to be minimal seamage to take care of, which I really like. Bunging the engines on, these are the cones that you don't get any mesh detail with, which is um, a bit of a shame. No doubt um, the aftermarket will come to our rescue at some point. Simple undercarriage, slotting in, understand that's nice and sturdy, and then you've got three options of how to have your ramp fully enclosed, which I'll probably do mine if I'm honest. Uh, sort of this sort of in-between down bit, and then fully down. But um, I note there's no kind of hydraulic retraction jacks or anything, but that'd be easy enough to replicate with a bit of um, Albion alloys tubing or, or whatever. Clear parts going in, um, understand they fit really well, which is, uh, which is nice. And then again, options for the door, open, partially closed or um, fully open. So fully closed, partially closed, fully open, I should say. No gun though. Uh, winch going on, various bits and bumps and bobs. A whole load of aerials. Um, I imagine most people would probably want to paint this area first and maybe then put, put them in a uh, little bit of touch up. That might be the easier way. And then this sort of plate here, this um, is a hatch that opens up to enable the loadie to look at the load when they're doing underslung loads. Here's that single row of HF aerials. And then rotor blades going on, and then that's it. So um, nicely detailed, but not too complicated. Schemes, bravo November. I think a lot of people are gonna do uh, this one. Um, this one was actually out in Afghan when I was there, uh, and I did go flying in a chinny. Um, it may have been this one, but um, more than likely not, but you never know. Um, but yeah, BN, they had to do that really, didn't they? Uh, loaded sensor data and then the Gulf War uh, version, which having looked at pictures online of this one was actually really fairly clean. Um, some of them all in this area was all kind of being washed off and everything. And that's what I want to do. In order to do that, though, I'm going to have to get another row of these from somewhere but um, yeah two nice options all right before we go into the plastic we'll have a look at the decals um, I don't know if these are cartograph or not yes they are he says just looking at the the box and they look all right don't they um, I'm not really a fan if I'm honest of the um, white on the instruments. Let me just move the light around a bit. There we are. Uh, too much white on there for my liking. Um, there's hardly any white on the uh, on the real thing, on normal instrument panels, but they're really nice. Um, I really like these walkways with all the yellow and the red and the white um, sort of dotted markings. Not really gonna be able to spray those unless you're a bit of a masochist. Um, but all this would be easy enough to spray. So yeah, really nice decals. Right, standard airfix, one big bag. Uh, 
and just take that out, put that over there, and we'll have a look at the clear parts first. Just try not to stab himself. Okay, um, as I'd expect, beautifully clear. There's some nice rivet detail there, but I can't actually feel it. Is that? No, it's not on the inside. So I imagine that's very finely recessed. The camera's going to pick that up. See all that riveting detail on there? And you can see how clear it is. A little bit of distortion on the curves, but yeah, that's really, really impressive. Yeah, big fan of that. Right, we'll just pop that in there for safekeeping. Okay, standard FX dark grey now for them. Um, straight away, I can see this is absolutely beautifully moulded. Really crisp. These are those raised panel details that Dave was on about. And I can feel the, the raised rivets, but I reckon easy enough to just replace those with um, some recessed rivets. That's the easy way. Or you can get some of these 3D decals, HGW and the like. But that is beautifully moulded. There is some rivet detail around here. Again, that's raised. I can feel that. That's really, really very well done. Especially up here where you've got like the mesh. So if they could do it there, why couldn't they do that on the cones? Would be my question. And then internal detail, all that inside the ramp. So that is really nice as well. Really a nice 3D effect. That's going to take a wash. Lovely. So that is sprue B. This is sprue D. So on this one, uh, we've got the same. We've got the opposite, obviously, fuselage half and the belly plate. Uh, this looks to be like one of those templates for drillage with a nice handy arrow on it so you don't get it the wrong way around. But that, that just that panel line detail is just perfect. Airfix just get better and better. So on this sprue here, I'll just move that out of the way so it gets less cluttered. So this is this capping piece with some really nice raised detail on it. Engine bits and bobs down the back. Um, some nice kind of mesh detail and rivet detail down here. So that's really nice. And again, if they can do it there, why can they do it on the cones? Nice rotor head detail. A little bit of wiring on there to dress those up. I reckon, and that'll look superb. And then um, the moulded in sag in the blades, again, what Dave said. So you might want to straighten those out. Some really nice uh, raised detail here. These are the internal fuselage parts, the lower half. Um, you'll probably want to drill these holes out down here at the back, where, where, here we go. Yeah, you probably want to drill those out for an even better 3D effect. And then some lovely detail on the back of the ramp. That's awesome. There we go, that's that sprue. Right, um, this one, again, beautiful detail on the floor. That's gonna take washes really nice. Now they were regularly washed down the back. When I was in Afghan, one of the, um, yeah, let's just say someone um, saw their lunch again all over the floor and literally buckets of water washed out. And it wasn't overly dusty, if I'm honest. I'll probably use a bit of artistic license and do that. Um, right, let's have a look at these bulkheads then. So that's, uh, where can, uh, there we go. So. Some really nice sort of soundproofing on that. And I'm just looking to see if there's any sort of warpage. Possibly a little bit there. Hard to tell if I'm honest. Oh 
you actually there is if I look at it this way up I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick it up but you might be able to see this is sort of curled upwards a little bit but actually that might be not too bad of a, um, a fix this one here got some ejector pin marks but I imagine that's going to be covered up by something that one doesn't look too bad actually warpage wise is these big bits that you're going to have to remove and actually they just snap off like that so that'd be easy and then these are the fabric seats so what you really have is this is a, a bit of tubing sorry this is a bit of tubing here and then this is the fabric quite nice fabric effect where your bum goes but on the back it's all a bit sort of straight but nice enough maybe maybe someone will do a aftermarket set for that we'll have to wait and see but yeah good enough for me and then the detailed sprue um now some people have had a bit of a short shot on here on the undercarriage everything on mine looks okay at first glance yeah, these are all fully formed on the undercarriage here's the uh, here's the instrument panel all that raised detail that's really really nice um right yeah these are the cones here and it's just such a shame they couldn't they couldn't mold any mesh on there come on edward we're holding out for you right there we are and that's the last sprue um all in all i'm really really impressed with this um and what immediately leaps out to me is this surface detail that is up there with the best of them that is beautiful so there we are right um let's pop back to the bench then and uh, no this is the bench let's pop back to the chair then and have a bit of a wash up okay there we are uh right notwithstanding all dave's stuff what you get in the box is actually really really nice if you fancy riveting yours and i'm definitely going to rivet mine if you look closely at the box art um all the riveting is visible on that so you can use that as a guide and that's exactly what i'm going to do i think um i think adding rivets to this is it's not a must or essential nothing ever is but you know what i mean um, sorry, I'm just checking the computer to see whether I turned on the microphone. Um, just thought entered my head. Uh, right, but um, yeah, so Horses for Courses on uh, on that one. When I did their Seeking 72nd, I added all the rivets. And I think it made a big difference. And it will too on here. Especially if you're going to do the Gulf War version. Or maybe United Nations version 1 with that lighter camouflage. I think they, you know, they'll you can make them really pop but in a scale way if that makes sense other than that i think the detail on this is really nice you can always add a bit of wire to the rotor system and the rotor head that'll lift things um, i'm wondering if res kit will come out with a 3d printed uh fully detailed rotor head that would be really really nice um, but what you get in the kit is uh, is perfectly good enough for me and that would just be i'm going to use it and i hate this phrase gilding the lily such a cliche isn't it in modeling magazines i hate it and i'm gonna have a word with myself because i said it um just then right there we are um i think this is a really really great kit standalone i think it fits perfectly in the airfix range and um i think anyone who builds this kit is gonna have a lot of fun doing so he's gonna have a really nice model at the end of it so there we are right um i'll leave it there thanks very much for watching hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.